year, I'm pastor, uh, just a head up, you know, that we love him. That's all right. You know, because that's why we're here today. Because we have for you. Thank God for you, Pastor, your teaching, your preaching. Thank God for your kindness. We thank God for that. You know, you still have so much more to do. You know, the road ain't gonna get no easier. Hallelujah. But we know one thing that you're ready for the test. Hallelujah. I just ask you that you continue to preach the word. Amen. Continue to rebuke, correct, and instruct and exalt. Hallelujah. Let's go to the throne of God today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you today for this special occasion. Lord God, that we can come together and celebrate, Lord God, this anniversary, Lord God. But Lord, we realize that, Lord God, you called it from the foundation of the world, Lord God. And Lord, we ask you right now, Lord God, that you would be with him, Lord God, as he continue on this journey. Bless him, Lord God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to use him in a special way, Father God. Yeah, yeah. But you know, Lord God, all things, Lord God. Yeah. There's no secret with you, Father God. Yeah. So, Lord, we just come today, Lord God, asking you right now, Lord God, that you have a pity and mercy upon us today, Lord God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Father God, that you would, Lord God, continue to lead and guide this church, Lord God. By the direction, Lord God, of Reverend Cone, Lord God. Yes. Continue to build him up, Lord God, yes. where he's torn down there, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to strengthen him, Lord God, while he remains, Father God. Yes. We pray for the family, Lord, right now, Lord God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, right now, that you will continue to bless them, Lord God. Yes. That you continue to keep them in your care, Father God. Yes. And Lord God, when trouble times come, Lord God, Lord God, let the brothers and the sisters that say they love him, Lord God, will stand by him, Father God. Lord, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you for this special occasion, Lord God, friends, Lord God, families that came out today, Lord God. Lord God, to show their support, Father God. We thank you for them, Lord God. And Lord, we ask you right now, give traveling grace to those that are traveling, Lord God. That will come, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray right now, Lord God, for the man of God that you would use today. Reverend Grimes, Lord God. Bless him, Lord God. Bless his entourage as they, Lord God. Tabernacle down at the highways, Lord God. Trying to get here, Lord God. That you would be with him, Father God. But Lord, we ask you right now, continue to bless Magnolia, Lord God. In the leadership here, Father God. In the name of Jesus right now, Father God. We cast out everything that's not like you today, Lord God. And we render this service over to you that you would have your way. Lord God, I pray today, Lord God, that, Lord God, that you would use them, Lord God. Let their mouth, Lord God, speak your word with clarity, Lord God. In the name of Jesus right now. So we bless your name today, Lord God. Not because of Lord God, who y'all know, not because of what you're going to do, but because of who you are, Lord God. We bless you today, Lord God, as we, Lord God, right now, Lord God, celebrating the anniversary of the man of God, Reverend Crone, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen. I'm 
Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Smith. Y'all know Sonny usually get up and take care of you when your mic go out. I guess you have to be on a certain list. <laughs> I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. First of all, we want to take this opportunity to thank our Heavenly Father for this gorgeous, beautiful provision that he's granted us today to meet here as we commemorate this great day in our church. Isn't it beautiful? Today we are all here to celebrate our one and only pastor who needs no introduction to what he has ushered us into this past year. On this Pastor's Day anniversary, the church would like to honor the spiritual father of this Magnolia Baptist Church. His contributions toward this church cannot be fathomed just by words. I didn't cry when I was writing this, I'm getting a tear now. God has blessed us, not with an ordinary leader, but an extraordinary one who mentors us and gives us a better understanding and vision. Through this man's obedience and transparency, the entire community will thrive. And not only will crime rates decrease, but Christian's fellowship will increase. Thank you, Pastor Combs for diligently serving our congregation and this community and leading us into new opportunities that will allow us to spread love, kindness, and God's word. Thank you for the time you sacrificed to be available to us. Now, how many pastors participate in the weekly choir rehearsal after working a demanding full-time day? Then, on Sunday, Preach like Paul, dance like David, and spin and slide like James Brown. Y'all, Pastor Combs knows how to have a good time with the Lord, and we love to have a good time with him. We believe that this church will go further from glory to glory and strength to strength. We can see it. We look forward to you giving us deeper insight. You're supposed to be looking at him, talking to <laughs> We look forward to you giving us deeper insight into the spirit and taking us higher than our walk. So, to all of us, that, all of you that are visiting with us today, let me uniquely welcome you to celebrate our pastor's first anniversary with us. This afternoon, we are celebrating our first chapter under the leadership of Pastor Combs. More importantly, we are here to praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is merciful and he deserves all the honor and all the glory. May God bless you.
and we thank God for that. God has blessed us thoroughly. He has blessed us uniquely. We are going to do some things in South Baton Rouge under this leadership that we've never done before. You know, if you just ask God and then wait, ask him and then wait, you'll be surprised at the things that he'll do. God is awesome. He is awesome. And this is his house. And don't ever think God don't know what's going on at his house. God's always in control of his house. Hey, I know what's going on in my house. So I know he knows what's going on in his house. So to Pastor Combs, to First Lady Combs, Alex, family, welcome to this house. We thank y'all for being here. We feel blessed that we're in your presence. I've got a new friend that sometimes we get along with nothing, nothing. But I love him and he knows that. He means a lot to me. So from our deacon ministry, from this church, I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you for giving them to us. I know it takes away from you, but we thank you.
those of you who haven't been here, when he get to moving on Sunday morning, he makes my knees hurt and I'm standing still. <laughs>
Good afternoon. We would like to say a few things about our pastor, Rodney D. Coles. P. He preaches, he preaches God's word, prays or is prayerful about all things, patient, polite. He is prudent, being careful about choices and stopping and thinking before acting. A, he's active in, in church, family, and community affairs, available to support, to offer support to others. Beautiful. Beautiful. S, he's sincere about God's word, saved and sanctified, served others, he sings and enjoys singing. That's not right. T, he's trustworthy. He teaches God's word. He has temperance, a person in control. He's tolerant, able to bear. O, he's obedient to God's word. Observant, alert, committed to God's word. Optimistic, cheerful, confident in the word of God. R, he's respectful towards others. He's a righteous man of God ready to serve and help others, he redeemed by the blood of Jesus.
among us today as we honor our pastor. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we come to the part where everybody's going to participate in. This is where you put that love into action. Okay? I tell my husband all the time, you love me? <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to have presentations. Only two minutes, please. Just two minutes for each presentation. And then afterwards, we're going to have the pastor's love offering. Everyone should have received some type of envelope when you came in. Um, if you did not receive something, please raise your hand at this moment. And we will make sure to get something.
call and first lady comes, uh, we just take this time to thank God for having you and your family here at the Magnolia Baptist Church for your dedication, your loyalty, bringing unity, and, what, and you lead by example. We thank God for that. Most importantly, the word is going forth, changing lives, and we just thank God for that. You are. And I need the task. So y'all can give me a little bit more than two minutes, okay? I'm going to try to make it work. Uh, I have a certificate that says, certificate of thanks. When we thank God for our pastor, we must give him thanks for two. But when Pastor Combs came to us, God also sent us you. And, we, and when we say thanks for all you do and lift you up in prayer every day, because it's our pastor's wife, you are serving God in a fine and worthy way. <laughs> to First Lady Combs and Pastor Rodney Combs, first year anniversary at the Magnolia Baptist Church, we present this flag to you, First Lady Combs. <laughs> the Magnolia Baptist Church, February 5th, 2023. Thank you for your first year of dedicated service. Pastor Rodney D. Combs, we thank God for sending us to, to sending you to us. We appreciate your devotion, your dedication, your love, your spirit, your teachings, and your wisdom. Thank you from the Magnolia Baptist Church family. the Pastor A Committee. We have a gift for you, Reverend Combs, as well as First Lady Combs, the spiritual throws, spiritual uh, saints on there. I want y'all to stay warm again with those. Okay. And we know that our pastor has a sweet tooth, y'all. So this is for Pastor Tom from the Herod and Brooks family as well, and the children, grandchildren. <laughs> and also from the Brooks and Herod family, First Lady Combs. We thank God for you too as well. And we didn't leave Sister Alexandria out. <laughs> She will always be there 
to the glorious end. I would like to take this moment to introduce to you a lovely, unsung hero for whom God handpicked to spread her life as the pastor's wife. First Lady Tanya Cummings.
first from our deacon, our deacon ministry. We have a token. That's from the deacons. Okay. And then so my wife said she didn't want to talk even though she'd been talking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> from the Magnite house to your house, to your family. One, thank you for becoming our pastor. Thank God for you. Thank God for the relationship we built one to another. I want you to know that we love you and support you. This church loves you and supports you. But my house loves you for as well. For you, she gave a small card. And for Sister Cone, she gets a whole bag. <laughs> we can call money. that's at the front, this is where you will place your envelope when you come by, please. So at this time, we have the uh, congregation to come forth and give your love offer. i 
celebration of him for the Quinn Chapel AME. And then we're going to have the spoken word. Oh, we're going to be blessed today, you guys. I mean, the spoken word that's coming from Brother Troy Grimes of the Quinn Chapel AME in Tangible Hall, Louisiana. After that, we got to have the invitation to Christian Discipleship Hall. We cannot have a program that would not invite somebody to Christ. Okay, then our closing remarks will come from our, our deaconess, Sandra Brooks, and then from our pastor and first lady Combs, and then we have the benediction, the blessing of food. And then at that time, please join us in the fellowship hall for our celebration feast. We ask everyone to come over and be seated. We have a nice meal that has been prepared for everyone. So we want you to come over and have a seat and, and fellowship with us, fellowship with our pastor. So this is the uh, the rest of the program, and this will go on as announced, unannounced. Okay, the, a, okay, the Queen A and E Choir is not here, so we're gonna proceed on.
no one else could.
our communion Sunday today. And, uh, you know, I preach uh, like I belong in the Baptist church. Uh, but uh, at one time, uh, uh, Reverend Combs, uh, his father, Rodney, him and I were real good friends, and I considered him as a father in the ministry. And I almost came to be a member of Star Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. And one of my pastors grabbed me and sent me up there to St. Francisville, and I came back and told Reverend Cone, they put me in the church, and he said, that's all right, that's all right. I'm still your spiritual father. And to this day, uh, you know, I thank God for him and his family, uh, how we have became to be real, real good friends. And Pastor Combs, I want to thank you, sir, uh, for giving me the opportunity to come and be a part of your appreciation uh, in this year. As a matter of fact, I told him is that in October, when they normally have hours, uh, Magnolia, where you at? Okay, let me say that again. Magnolia, where you at? Let me say that again. Magnolia, where you at? I can't hear you. Magnolia, where you at? I have invited your pastor to preach my appreciation in October. Now, it's an hour and something away from me. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you all and uh, uh, fellowshipping together at Queen Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. It's one to all my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Denomination don't mean nothing. Yeah. It's one God, one faith. It's one baptism. Yeah. Man, I won't be before you long, but uh, just for minutes. Let's give God some praise. Yeah. I always say this is that when the word of God is speaking to you and is speaking to you and you agree with it, then you say amen. amen. Now, if you help me then I'm almost finished already. Uh, you help me is that when the word is spoken, then we come together and praise God. Amen? Amen. A very familiar passage of scripture, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the young preacher. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Reprove, reprove, exhort with all long suffering. And die. For the time is coming. Come on, come on. And they will not endure sound doctrine. But there, but after their own lust, shall they heed to themselves. Teachers having itching ears turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be unto fable. Mm -hmm. Just for a little while, I want to talk from the subject. Keep preaching. Keep preaching. Now, Pastor Combs, uh, I was sitting there and I heard um, the members say how you uh, love to praise God and love to sing. I didn't start singing until I got to the church I'm at now, and I had asked God to give me to be able to sing. And my wife, I look 
because you know when I'm going to get them right. Just shake their head. I need you. Some apostles, 
some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors. What did he give them for? For the perfection of the saints. To teach them the knowledge of God. Now, can I be honest with some of you? Is that some people don't like nobody telling them what to do. I wish I had a witness in this chair. He can't tell me nothing. I've been on this earth for a long time. What can he tell me? But when God uses the man of God to tell you about yourself, then you ought to receive what God is saying. I hear, I hear some folks say, well, uh, has he been to seminary? But when God called you, it ain't about the seminary, it's about the anointing that is upon your life for the man of God. to the doctor and we're sick and the doctor writes his prescription and he gives you uh, a prescription and you go right to the farm Come on. and you get it filled and you see that big old horse pill that's in the box and, 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 and you no, it's nasty to you. You don't want to take it but you muster up the strength and you take that big pill Because you know that that pill will make you feel better. Can I tell you something? The word is the same thing. It, 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 it sometimes it don't taste good going down. But it soothes my soul because God has given it to the man of God. I have witness here. Watch this. Let me get to the text of that. When we go, how many of us have ever been out to the restaurant? That's all right. Raise your hand if you've been out. All right. So that means that everybody is in agreement with me because you have been to the restaurant. You have a waiter that comes in. Somebody ought to say amen up there. The waiter comes in and they treat you real nice and bring your food when you want it and you eat so good and you feel so good. But guess what you do afterwards? We will not give them just no dollar. That they've been too good to us. Every time they ask for something, they can't, we, every time we ask for something, they came right back with it. Every time we wanted a piece of another piece of bread, here they come with it. We wanted a piece, another sprite, here they come back with it. So when it's all over with, how much we gonna give them, y'all? Oh, somebody ought to hear me. Sometimes we go beyond what the gratuity say. Because they've been so good to us and they fed us and we were happy with that. And because of that, then we give them more than we intend to do. Isn't it the same way with the word of God on Sunday morning? Is that when you come and you've been broken down all week, you done caught here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. But here comes Sunday morning. Oh, Pastor Combs gets up, start preaching the word of God, and he encouraged me that I can keep on going. Because the devil is trying to block me, but God is going to raise me up. He teaches and encourages me, I'm going to keep on going. And when you keep on going, God has a blessing. With your name on yeah. And when he encourages you, and when it's time for offer to appear, Come on now. that dollar should be way in the back back there. <laughs> you ought to be able to say, you know, Pastor has blessed me today on, with the word of God. I'm going to bless him. Come on. That's how you receive your blessing, because when you bless the man of God, God will bless you. I have a witness here. 
So, we see Paul writing to Timothy. Timothy just got a church. He was elected as the pastor of Shady Grove Missionary Baptist Church. A young preacher. But Paul says to them, says to him, I charge you. Therefore, before God and before our Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and in his kingdom. If the pastor does not do what he's supposed to do with God's children, he got to give an account before God. I wish I had a witness here. And, 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 and when he does not do the will of God with his children, then the blood would be on his hand. Yeah. I wish I had two things. Yeah. Sometimes, my brother and sister, Come on. that when he stands behind and give the spoken word, I'd rather God, I'd rather please God and you upset with me. Because I found out a long time ago that you don't have a kingdom to put me in. And you did not call me. God called me to do his will and his way for his children. God have a witness here. And, 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 and Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Tell it just like it is. Yeah. For we know that the word has a two-headed sword. Yeah. So it don't just cut you. Yeah. It cut up here too. Yeah. And just like how you have to go to God in prayer, so the pastor have to go to God in prayer. Yeah. But he said, preach. The word to the people. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, uh, we get so caught up with uh, uh, naming and claiming, throwing and jumping, when all we are required to do is to preach the word of God. Say anything about a motivation of speech. But if I'm wrong, then you tell me about myself. So I have a witness here. He said, preach the word. He, he said, be instant. The word instant means that you have to, Pastor, prepare yourself before you stand before God's children and give them the word of God. He called, God causes the pastor to do two things. Preach and preach to his children. He didn't say that you need to be at every meeting he did not say that you need to uh, do Bible class. But when we teach the people, then the people should be able to do the will and the work of God that you have given unto him. To preach the word of God. Do I have a witness? He said, be in season. When everything is going all right, yeah. preach the word. Yeah. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, that when the word is going forward and it hits you, then why is it that sometimes some people get mad at the preacher because the word is hitting them? They stop paying their money. They go to another church. I wish I had a witness that they start talking about the pastor or he don't know what he's talking about. But the word of God will either draw you or drive you. 
We shall hear the witness here. And so he said, in season and out of season, preach the word. Reprove and rebuke. I, I, I want to pause right here for you. That means correct you when you're wrong. Many folks don't like that part. Of that. They don't like to be corrected. Well, us been doing this here way for a long time, and, and, and this is how us going to do it, and, and I don't care what you say, but us going to do it like this. Us is wrong. Every day 
at night. But the shepherd's job is to take care of his sheep. Someone called a pastor in the wee hours of the night at the hospital and he comes. Someone's in trouble in the correction facility. He's coming. Because it is his job to take care of his sheep. Do I have a witness here? And when he take care of his sheep, he warns them that there is danger out there. Be careful where you get your food from. I wish I had y'all must be ready to eat. Be careful where you eat from. Because all tables are not clean. And there's some sweet food out there that will give you tooth decay by eating all that sweet stuff. You know, things that you want to hear. Prosperity. Everybody is not going to be rich. We're going to have some poor folks among us. But if I trust in God, he will make a way out of no way. Some folks that, that they want to go to other churches. Well, I'm going to try over here. I'm going to try over there. When you already got a good pastor that's feeding you the word of God. So we have to stay committed to the kingdom. Moses said that he was leading the children of Israel. And sometimes pastor, congregation, can I just be honest? Sometimes y'all make us kind of mad. Oh, I wish I had two minutes. Sometimes y'all make us kind of upset. And sometimes we even lose our cool because of what you done said or what you done did. Somebody ought to say amen up there. You on me, crap. You talking about me because I did it. Listen at what this listen at what Moses said. God told Moses to leave the children of Israel. And when they got to a certain place, because the folk was all in Moses' ear, talking about, you don't know what you say. You don't know what you do. And then all this that got back to the man of God. You know how you do that talking on the phone? Girl, I don't know about this here. Girl, did you hear that? Girl, this did happen. Girl, that happened. I, I don't know about him. And some kind of way it got back to the past. Well, Moses heard what they said, and, and, and God told him to speak to him. And when you are upset, then you do some things that you are not doing. Yes. And instead of Moses speaking to you, he hid it. And because he hid it, he could not aid, he could not go to the promised land. All because come on, Y'all made it mad. Pastor Cone. Don't let them make you upset. When you come and start slamming on the poor pit. Because God is like spinach. Like Popeye. When you eat it, it builds you back up. Put your trust in God and lean not to your own understanding. Because God will make a way. Out of no way. Do I have a witness here? We do not have a manual and say this is how we do it and this is how this and this and that. We listen to God. 
And whatever God tells us to do, we lead by him. And if you have confidence in your pastor, then wherever he leads me, I shall follow. Do I have a witness? But he said, preach the word. Preach it in season and out of season. Preach it when they don't want to hear. When they don't want to hear the word of God. Still preach. Don't be afraid of their faces. Because some people's face, they look real bad. They don't even smile when you preach. They, they look like they saw a ghost or something. They just sit there and look at you like a, a bump on the Lord. But if God really been good to you, the Bible says, let me redeem when the Lord say so. Thank God I'm right. Can you help me say it? The young Timothy preach the word. Tell them that the Lord will make a way out of no way. Tell them that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not go. Tell them that we've been made and do for a night. But shall I say, John?
for the rain shall soon be cast away.
that you know that if God has blessed you, you do not have a church home. There are many churches out there. But while the blood is running warm in your veins, and the spirit of the living God is telling you, this is what you need to be. Don't hesitate. But let God use you. Let God use you. And if that's you, then why don't you come? See, one of the things, my brothers and sisters, is that the devil don't want you to give what God has for you. He wants you to stay seated. He don't want you to open up your mind. Because to him, he don't want you to praise God. But when you start giving God the glory, doors that was once closed open now. Friends that you never knew God would put people in your life to help you and raise you up. Because all of us have a purpose in the kingdom. Is that one today? Is that one?
our visiting friends, for your attendance, and some of who are part of our family, who came from near and far this afternoon to share in this great event. Last but not least, a special thanks to you, Brother Sonny Jones. Okay. Y'all, I'm, 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 I'm trying to hurry because you got some finger licking in. Real drunk. Okay. And the culinary ministry for the scrumptious feast prepared for this occasion. And also to Sister Dana Malone for the decoration group was set up on the other side of the fellowship hall. And we'd like to thank Sister Tondela Jones too as well. For all that you see here, programs and everything too as well. We just like to, to thank her too. And I like to thank the Pastor A Committee. And the Pastor A Committee, as I told your name briefly, Sister Jocelyn Johnson, Sister Wanda Jones, Sister Mary Alice Hurd, just raise your hand or stand up. Sister Ada Jones, Sister Karen Johnson, and Brother Michael Jingles. And Magnolia. You got to put your feelings aside and realize you're working for the Lord. And the Lord, the, and if you have differences with your brother, pull them to the side and talk about it. Yes, I, I'm, sometimes I'm aware about some of the differences that you all have. But y'all take care of yourself. I don't have to get involved. That's a beautiful thing. When brothers and sisters may have some disagreements, sister and sister, brother and brother, and they resolve it themselves. Well, Pastor Young, I don't need to say nothing about it. They, they did just what the Bible said. Yeah. That they talk amongst each other right. and resolve it. That, that's a beautiful thing. And it's, yeah. I also enjoy that. The lesson, the things that I teach, I can see you all implement. I can see you all, you all say some of the things that I say. I'm like, it's working. It's starting to say some of the things that I say, those things. But, we're coming together as a beautiful family. We've done great things in this one year that we've been together. Yeah. But the Lord has so much more yeah. for us to do. Yeah. And, and for those of you that are visiting with us, you all are sisters and brothers as well. Amen. So join in Amen. and work with us. Amen. When you have something going on, let us know. We'll be there to work with you. And you know you can always come here. And many of you that come here, you act like you're already family. I consider you members out of when they come. And, we, and it's good that you all are able to make yourself at home here. And before I go any further, I want to thank Reverend Grimes. What a beautiful message that he preached. Beautiful message. 
My, my dad helped him during the ministry, and he did the same thing for me. He, he, he told me, say, right now, I, I'm going to let you preach, but you got to come visit now. And then I, I showed up to visit. Well, one time I just came. I just, just came. They were having, I just showed up one Sunday. And then he's like, well, I want you to do, um, uh, I think I did, what it was? I did Black History. That's what I did, Black History Pro. Boy, we had a good time over there. Boy, they, and that's important. So my father's dead and he's gone, he's with the Lord. But the things that he's done, still making a way. You see, that's what happens when you serve the Lord. The things that you've done for the Lord, people are gonna appreciate it when, you, when you're gone. Your descendants are gonna benefit from it. The Lord is gonna still be working through your ministry that you have. And that's why the only what we do for the Lord is gonna last. That's it. Amen. And what a what a great message. And Reverend Grimes got the got the movement up here. I saw it move like that before. Oh. So the spirit got on. That was stuff. I ain't feel like that. And we, we definitely going to be there in October when he calls. You never write back, no. Amen. Amen. We're going to make it out there. We're going to have a good time, too. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Also, want to thank these ministers that are up here. Pastor, Brother Dickerson. He's a good man. I met him. He came and introduced himself to us. He came to a storm and rain with having an event. And he introduced himself to me. He's a good friend. And we're going to do things together. And I'm happy that you're here. And he, he, he extended us the invitation. Had their, um, had their church anniversary. But we were, I was preaching over there at St. Luke's. But we did send something up. But we're going to come ourselves. That's what, you want the relationship, not just the donation. That's, see, that's what's important, building relationships. The other stuff comes with it. And also we have... My brother, Reverend Malcolm, come. Gave me my first opportunity to preach. I preached at both his churches the, the, um, the, the, the first time I preached. It was May 19, 2019. I remember. And boy, I tell you, we had a good time. And I got to, um, I preached, a, preached at um, Galilee the first time. And that was just like a warm-up. Got to St. Joe. St. Joseph prayed, prayed the Lord. I like, we praised me at back no. Boy, before you knew it, I was down and out. Boy, they were just pushing me. That's how they do the same thing you all do. So I'm telling you, when we go there for our Sunday, you're going to see some sisters and brothers. You're going to feel like you know them because they pray to the Lord the same way you all pray. So we're looking forward to coming there and celebrating your anniversary as well. And we have Reverend Smith here. He's a good help. He loves the Lord. He put us not a, he's a strong man demonstrating the, the, the word of God. You know, he and I, we had an election, and I was chosen as a pastor. He stayed right here and worked with me. He told me before he left, Pastor, say, I'm, I'm going to leave for a little while. He said, because you need to get to know the people. But I'm coming back. That's the only reason I'm going to leave. I'm not upset with you about anything. And two months later, he was back. Right. He didn't just come back. He started working, too. Amen. He was a good man, Reverend Smith. Very good man. And had the Lord gave him to me to, to, to assist me. Amen. He's a proud one. I know he prayed for me. That time, I hadn't even told him. He could see that something was bothering him. And he'd stand up out, I'm going to pray for him. Yeah. He did a couple of Sundays ago. Sent me and my wife down and prayed for us. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And to the choir. Yeah. You know, these, yeah. these my people here. Yeah. <laughs> As they say, I, so I, I, I come to choir rehearsal every, every Wednesday night. So to say. So I can know some of the words, I ain't gonna remember them all. <laughs> like they say, I, I like I like to sing a little bit, so I, I like I wanna know the word to help him sing. No brother Sunday, he was there by himself, um, singing tenor. He stood up there and just sung it. He over there getting the getting the meals ready right now. Boy, they're gonna tell you that the deacons that we have here, they work together. The deaconess as well, they work as one unit. 
working together just like a machine. And that's the way it should be. And we give God the praise. We give God the praise. God has done a great work in that notice the first year of, of, of me being a pastor. And he's got more to do. So let us look toward God. And any good thing that comes out of it is not me. It's the Lord working within me. As I told you before, I, the Lord has worked with me. Sometimes I can have, I, I don't say things the right way all the time. The Lord working with me with that. Sometimes you got to shut your mouth. I learned that you can't, you don't need to say everything that you think. Took me a long time to learn that, but I learned. It. And sometimes you just gotta let the walk, let the Lord work for you. He gonna take care. Let him fight your battles for you. And that, that's something that I love. Now, also, I want to thank Magnolia. It's something we had. We had boy, we had a time here Sunday morning. This Sunday morning. Now, see, we don't have no all Sundays here. See, I came. I was I, when I first got. I I, I was looking. Oh, man, I go to church in the morning. And I got to go in the evening. Boy, I, I started working on that message. I started watching. Woo. So I told my wife, I said, say, I'm going to preach this morning. So I can tell you all right now. <laughs> I said, I'm going to preach. I was up 5 o'clock in the morning. And boy, and when I got here, the choir, everybody was ready already. Boy, we had a time up in here. So, Reverend Graham, the cold was already hot. <laughs> all you had to do was drop the meat. It was already hot. Amen. <laughs> I want to thank the, the choir. You all worked so hard. Our minister of music, Mr. Brandon. He came, the Lord brought him here to us, and he's doing a fabulous job. And he's bringing, he knows the, the contemporary songs, but he also play those old songs. But sometimes I, I'll sing one of them old songs. There, look, what is that he's singing? See, I'm a, I went to choir rehearsal. I went to testimony service. So I know all of them songs. I grew up doing that all my life. And Brother Brandon, he's all right now. And I just want to thank you all. And all the gifts that you've given, you all don't have to do. You don't have to. That's why we say thank you. That's why I say thank you. You all doing that out of the kindness of your heart. And I really appreciate it. And something else I told you when I first, I told you, I don't, I didn't usually receive, I had a hard time receiving things from people. The Lord helping me with that. I'm able to receive things from people. I, I usually want to give. When somebody, like, oh, I, I, I can pay for it. Don't worry about it. Rodney, let somebody do something for you. My uncle told me that. My uncle Mike, right before he died, the last time I saw him, Rodney, let somebody do something for you. He didn't know he was preaching to me that time, at that moment, right there. And I still, I remember that. Every time I think somebody want to do something, I'm like, I don't know. Let them do it. That's the Lord trying to, you turn it down blessings from the Lord by doing that. But you give God the praise and you say thank you. Yeah. Lastly, we're going to have the first lady, Sister Tanya, comes up. Do you want to say something? You can stay there. I'll bring the mic to you. First of all, I want to say to my Magnolia Baptist Church family, thank you for welcoming my family to get you here from I am so excited about this year, the things God is going to do with us, in us, and through us as a body. I believe that we pray, trust, and obey, serve, walk by faith, and walk in love. We will be well on our way to greatness. Greatness the way God sees greatness. And that's serving and loving each other and our fellow man. I believe God's going to do great things with us. Yes. So just, yes. as, you know, walk by faith and love, follow the pastor, and I just think he's going to do some great things with us. Amen. 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 Before we go, I want to recognize some other people in my family. My, my mother's here, Mrs. Rose out of Combs. She's here. Very a lot of things that I, I, I've learned, like Bible stories and so forth. My mom was the one that bought the books That's and so awesome. forth. I remember the first time she took us to the library to get a library card. And I remember I was so proud. I had a library with my name on I was so proud. It meant a lot to me. Mom had done great, a lot of things for us. She supported my dad through his ministry. 
And as I mentioned, my, my dad, he's, he's passed on. And my dad's brothers, my uncles, they stepped right in. My uncle Leroy, who you all know. My uncle Henry Cone, that's Jansen Cone, his father. And my uncle Robin, who you all know as well. And my auntie Shirley. And also here, we have um, uh, the usher from Star Bethlehem Baptist Church. His name, his name, Brother Bale. Him and my daddy, they'd be out there doing stuff around the church. Where I'd be fussing at him and they would be standing right there. And man, I would go home and somebody would talk to me. Like that. Then next thing you know, daddy go get him a plate, bring it to him. That'd be way of apologizing. Now Bill come, he come here and he yelling at me. So, that, that's his way of showing love. So, so that's why I just let him just say, don't worry about it, just let him talk. That's his way of saying he loves me. He loves me. So we happen to have Brother Bell here. Amen. And now that brings us, it brings us to the close of our service. And we're going to ask that Reverend Grimes come forward and bless the food and do the benediction for us. Stand for Eternal God, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for the food, for the hands that prepare, for the nourishments of our bodies, oh God. We thank you. We thank you on this wonderful day, oh God, as we celebrate Pastor Combs and First Lady Combs, oh Lord God. Oh, we give you the glory. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit spread through henceforth and abide in the people of God say. First, we're going to ask Pastor Combs, First Lady Combs, and the Combs family to march out down the center aisle and go to the fellowship hall. Our pulpit ministers. Ministries. <laughs> 